Hello. Today we're going to look at a old piece of military test equipment. And when I mean old, I mean old. This dates from 1920. What is this? You can see it's not very big. Wave meter type SCR 111. Let's see if you can get a good, good look at the tag there. Made by National Electrical Supply Company, NESCO. They were a big time uh, a government contractor in the early days. They lasted well into World War II, and even, I think they transformed a little bit and continued even into the 60s. Uh, they, I think, only did government contracts, um, but uh, they made nice stuff. In any case, let's look at this thing. This was used, as, as it's called a wave meter, basically a frequency meter, and uh, it was used to tune up your transmitter. There are two ways you could use this. You could either tune up your transmitter, set the frequency of your transmitter, or you could find out what frequency your transmitter was transmitting at. Let's take a look at this thing. Small wooden box, olive drab of course. Got a little light bulb, a switch, and a knob. There's not much to this. This thing is crude with a capital C. You can see most of the insides by opening it up. It's got a little hatch here. Place for a battery. I believe that's just a D-cell. The D-cell dates way, way, way back. And it does kind of look like a D-cell would fit in there. What else do we have in here? Well, let's look at the schematic. Not much. Got a coil, a buzzer, a resistance pile, which is mostly just a rheostat, a lamp, a switch, and hidden, hidden inside, I'm not going to open this thing up because it is a bit of a pain to do, variometer, basically a variable inductor. Okay, how do you use this thing? Well, it sort of acts sort of like a, a dip meter. The A switch position here is off. Nothing connects to it. If you look at the instructions, see if you want to figure out what frequency your transmitter is at, you put the switch into the C position, set this little knob here, so the, the lamp just starts to glow. And you turn the knob until the lamp starts glowing a little better. Basically, you, you, it picks up the, the, uh, the radio waves from the transmitter, which is presumably sitting right next to this wave meter. Gives it a little more energy, and you'll see the lamp brighten up a bit. Read it off the... The knob. Now notice these is, this is wavelength, so if you convert this, this actually works well below the broadcast band. Below 500 kilohertz. I think it's actually, what, about uh, 160 to 300 kilohertz? Then again, remember, this was 1920. That was standard stuff back then. Now likewise, and maybe more interesting, if you wanted to set the frequency of of a receiver or transmitter, you'd switch it into the B position, and that buzzer would start to go. Now you're thinking, what's a buzzer doing in there? Well, that's just interrupting the uh, interrupting the circuit at uh, some frequency. I don't know, some probably annoying sounding frequency. And you set the wavelength of what you want, say you want, uh, well, let's say 1100. You'd set the, the knob right there. And uh, you'd then go to your receiver and start tuning up and, until you could hear that buzzer in the receiver's headphones. Like I said, very crude. There are no tubes in this thing, and this is way before transistors. Very nicely made. And honestly, the thing got the job. The thing got the job done. It was very simple. But then again, the radios were very simple back then. And this is really all you needed. Tubes were expensive. They were extremely fragile. 
Think about having one of those fragile 1920-era tubes on a, on a, on a battlefront. It, it wouldn't last long. In fact, they did have a lot of problems uh, with, with uh, reliability back then. So here, reduce all the uh, stuff that could break easily down to a buzzer. What's easier than a buzzer? There was a similar model called SCR95, which was a slightly different frequency range. It was almost identical. There were a couple other frequency meters, or wave meters, I should more properly say, uh, of slightly different dimensions, uh, uh, types, and such like that. But by about 1930, the buzzer and lamp system kind of went out of, went out of style. And there you finally get the, the tube-based frequency meters, which could go much higher in frequency and were far more accurate. Let's face it, this thing is not too accurate. So in any case, this is a good good look at a very simple testy, a tens, test instrument that uh, the U.S. Army used back in the 20s, probably into the 30s. I can't see it going further than that. By then, these particular radios were kind of being replaced by the fancy new tube models. So, in any case, I hope you enjoyed this video and this quick look at an SCR-111 wave meter from 1920, made by Nesco. Thanks, guys. Bye now.